you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the, world. in the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. It's Voss here from the Chris Voss Show.com. The Chris Voss Show.com. Welcome to the big show, my family and friends. As always, the Chris Voss Show is the family that loves you but doesn't judge you. At least not as harshly as your mother in law. So we always. Uh, are there for you, even though your family may be like, we're not going to be seen with that person. You know, you know what that's like. My family's the same way. Uh, would you want to be seen with me? Probably not either. Uh, anyway, guys, we have an amazing mind on the show and some great data and information we're going to be sharing with you today. Uh, in the meantime, be sure to refer the show to your family, friends, and relatives. Go to goodreads.com, for chess Chris Voss, LinkedIn.com, for chess Chris Voss, YouTube.com, for chess Chris Voss, and Chris Voss One on the TikTok channels over there where all the kids are playing. Uh, today, we have an amazing gentleman on the show. Mike Begg joins us on the show. He is an entrepreneur and expert in e-commerce and digital marketing. He co-founded AMZ Advisors with his two partners in 2015 and has generated over half a billion dollars in sales for its clients. Mike and the AMZ team also operate AMZ courses educating Amazon sellers on how to maximize sales on the platform and go advance. Go Advance, Go Avance, uh, which helps brands expand into Latin America. He loves sharing advice and help on anything related to Amazon and building efficient businesses. Welcome to the show, Mike. How are you? I'm doing very well, Chris. Thank you for having me here, and thank you for that great introduction. There you go, and thank you for coming. Uh, it was just your bio, so it was pretty awesome that way. Uh, give us the .coms, wherever people can find you on the interwebs there. Yeah, the uh, the websites are amzadvisors.com and goavance.com. Uh, amzcourses.com is also there, but you can also find the courses through AMZ Advisors. So multiple options. There you go. So uh, tell us a little bit about uh, 30,000 overview of what AMZ Advisors does. Yeah, so from the extremely high level, what we do is we partner with some of the biggest brands in the world and help them sell more online, specifically on the Amazon platform in the U.S., but we'll also help these brands get into other markets if they're interested in it. For example, we take a lot of U.S. brands into Europe, a lot of European brands into the U.S. and, and, and other marketplaces as well. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we have another company specialized for Latin America because Latin America is a whole different beast. There you go. Latin America has got to be pretty uh, uh, growing, opening, things like that. Yeah, I mean, the market... It, uh, I and e-commerce e markets are growing across. There you go. Looks like we're getting some dropout on yeah, the that? internet there. Uh, yeah, looks like we're getting some dropout on the internet uh, okay. there. Uh, let's see how it goes. So you were saying something about Latin America? Yeah, so Latin America uh, is growing fast. I mean, three of the fastest uh, growing e-commerce markets in the world are located in Latin America. That's Mexico, Brazil, and Argentina right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so the opportunity is huge. When we look at the actual size of the market, it's about $350 billion per year uh, in sales happen in Latin America, which is pretty, in e-commerce sales, excuse me, happen in Latin America, which is a really significant number, uh, especially when you start comparing it to some of the other countries and marketplaces worldwide. So uh, it's awesome, but there are a lot of challenges for foreign brands because in most instance, instances, it's very protectionist. You need a, a local business. You need local business partners mm -hmm. and a whole bunch of other hurdles that you need to, to jump over. Go. So what is your origin story? How did you get into this business and uh, start this company? So originally, uh, I'm from Connecticut. I, I don't live in Connecticut anymore. I actually live in Guadalajara, Mexico. Oh, wow. um, so that's uh, a little bit of a detail. But uh like I said, originally from Connecticut, went to university in uh, Philadelphia and in uh, Long Island as mm -hmm. well. And uh, when I graduated, I went and worked in consulting. Uh, I really didn't like consulting. I got into real estate development. Uh, oh. I worked in real estate development for Sears at the time, which uh, this was about 2014, 2015. Uh, Sears was kind of on its way out or you know, we were trying to save the company the best we could. 
uh, anyway, I ended up doing a bunch of different real estate deals over there. But one of the interesting deals that really caught my attention was Amazon trying to buy our space at a mall. And oh. I was like, why was Amazon trying to buy our space at a mall? It turns out they wanted to build a fulfillment center or a warehouse to actually do last mile delivery for, for consumers. Oh, wow. And that's really where I started getting my attention on Amazon and e-commerce. And then from there, you know, started launching my own brands, mm -hmm. had some success there, realized a lot of other big brands didn't know what they were doing and kind of just evolved into a marketing agency. And then all the oh, other wow. opportunities have come out of that. So you helped kind of resolve your issues with trying to sell stuff and then uh, moved into, well, I, if I, my recipe seemed to work, uh, I'll help other brands. Exactly. I mean, we, as my, when I say we, it's the same founders I have named advisors. We were selling art supply products and there were two different things that came out of that. One, uh, we were competing against brands like Crayola and we were beating Crayola in a lot of categories, which was kind of an eye opener. Like how is our small startup able to compete with Crayola, which was wild at the time to think. And it also made us realize what our strengths and what our weaknesses were. Our strengths are that we're really good at marketing and really good at sales. We're really bad at inventory management. We ran into a whole bunch of inventory management challenges. So it was kind of playing to our strengths, uh, using what was working for us for other companies and then helping other brands take advantage of the Amazon platform. There you go. Well, that sounds pretty awesome. You were selling eBooks to retail arbitrage and private labels, digital marketing, and online education at one point. Oh yeah. Lots of different stuff. So uh, originally we started with, uh, publishing, self-publishing on the Kindle platform. That was kind of our first foray into mm -hmm. e-commerce on Amazon. And you know, that's a pretty, pretty low cost way to start selling products. You make a royalty on every book sold oh, from yeah. there. It was a uh, retail arbitrage where we started, uh, going to like every Walmart target in the tri-state area. Uh, again, like I said, I'm from Connecticut. So, uh, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, buying up everything on clearance and then selling it on Amazon. Uh, we made about $10,000 from that and we wow. flipped that, put it into our first private label brand, which was the art supply brand and, uh, you know, kind of evolved that way. There you go. Well, you're kicking ass and taking names then. So, uh, what, what sort of, uh, what's a, now evidently you have two of your friends as your business partner. What's it like doing that? I do. Yeah. It's, uh, it's it's one of the things that a lot of people don't recommend. Uh, mm -hmm. like I've heard that numerous <laughs> times. Is don't work with your visit, your friends uh, as business partners. Uh, it's always a unique experience, but I think for us, it, it's worked really well because we can be super transparent and super honest with each other, and no uh -huh. one really gets offended. Uh, so, for example, like if I come in, I don't, I'm not gonna say me, but if someone else comes in, one of my partners comes in swearing at me or complaining about whatever, like I'm not gonna get offended. Like they're obviously bothered by something, and we're gonna try to resolve it. So yeah, there you go. I, I think it works for for what we have. I, I highly wouldn't recommend it for everyone, but mm -hmm. uh, it really depends on you know the types of friendships you have, um, what your shared or common goals are and, and what direction you're working in. There you go. It can be challenging sometimes, uh, whether it's a spouse or someone you're in a relationship or, or friendships, because, uh, you know, it, it can be a challenge, uh, which it, and it's harder to fire friends than it is to, uh, <laughs> work with them uh, or something like that. Uh, so what's your proudest moment as an entrepreneur? Uh, Whew, that's a good one. Um, I think for me, so like I, I was pretty particularly involved in this. So when we talked about kind of the origin story a little bit, I didn't go into too much detail with it, but uh, how I ended up here in Mexico. But as we were starting the agency, we wanted to give it as much of a runway to take off. So we had all our money saved, everything that we had been you know, saving from selling products as well as from uh, what we were doing, you know, in our personal jobs before that. I was doing real estate development, my partner's jobs as well. And we were like, how can we make this money last as long as possible? So uh, we realized that we could move to Mexico and obviously mm -hmm. the money would go a lot longer there. Uh, oh, yeah. So originally we moved to Playa del Carmen while we were really getting the business up and running uh, near Cancun. And as the business started to gain a lot more traction, uh, you know, I was kind of tired of Playa del Carmen. I wanted to go see other parts of Mexico or travel more. Mm -hmm. Uh, I ended up coming to Guadalajara, which is where I live now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I met my wife, uh, who was you know, not my wife back then, but, uh, I met her here in Guadalajara, uh, ended up coming back here after traveling for about a year. Um, you know, we started dating then. And, uh, ever since then, 
she pushed me a little bit more to start hiring here in Mexico instead mm. of hiring in the U.S. or hiring hiring freelancers. And I think uh, building the team that we've built here in Mexico is probably one of the things I'm most proud of. Uh, we have a team of about 55 employees in total. And, you know, taking it from really scratch to figuring out the hiring processes, the company structure, everything that we needed in Mexico to be successful uh, was a huge accomplishment for us. And I think that's one of the things that I've really enjoyed. And then seeing like the culture evolve within the company and how much our employees love working for us has been another awesome thing uh, that I've been able to experience. There you go. And uh, per your website, it says you accelerate seven figure brands on Amazon, Walmart and Mercado Libre. Yes. Yeah. There you go. So, yep. So what we do is uh, we take brands essentially from $1 million uh, on, in online sales and we get them mm -hmm. over 10, 10 million. Uh, wow. We have an entire program to, to help them get there and everything that we focus on. And we have at this point, hundreds of success stories doing that. Uh, obviously, Amazon in the US is the most uh, the most well-known and the easiest platform to make that happen on. But we've also mm -hmm. had, uh, we've also worked with a lot of brands at Walmart. Mercado Libre, we work with brands that are looking to get into Latin America. Uh, again, that's that's mainly the big platform down here. So we do a lot of focus on that as well. There you go. Where do most brands fail when uh, it comes to selling on Amazon or those other platforms? I would say that most brands fail by not investing enough into the platform um, and not really understanding where the platform fits within their larger uh, sales funnel or within their company as a whole. Mm -hmm. You're never going to make a ton of money on Amazon. There's a ton of fees. There's a ton of costs. It's very competitive. Your advertising costs are higher. If you are going to Amazon trying to make it a profit center for you, you're approaching it the wrong way. Oh. And it's it's different for every business, but in general, if you have, uh, I think it's I think the number is like seventy percent of all consumers are going to Amazon to start a product search online now. Mm -hmm. If you're not on Amazon and not being discoverable, uh, consumers are not going to find your brand. Your brand's oh. not going to grow. You're not going to get sales lift on any of the platforms, and those are all the problems that. Uh, most brands don't realize when they when they go to the platform, they're like, oh, well, I want to make this margin. I want to make this. I'm not going to spend this much on ads. I'm not going to invest on it. They don't see the growth they want. They don't acquire the new customers they want. And then they don't really build out the rest of their sales funnel with Amazon is the, the main piece for, for consumers to find their brand and then get everyone in and push them into whatever other platforms they can. There you go. Uh, so how important is it to use Amazon FBA, which I, you'll, well, need to identify what this, that is. I think I know what it is when selling on Amazon as opposed to shipping yourself, I think. Yeah. So there's two different models to fulfill customer orders. One is, uh, for, you know, to have your own warehouse and send orders from there. You use a 3PL and send orders from there, a third party logistics company. Um, or you can use fulfillment by Amazon, which is Amazon's own uh, in-house warehouse network. And the warehouses are everywhere in the US now. The, the network's crazy. It's one of the largest logistics companies in the world right now. Uh, but essentially what they do is that they will store your inventory for you. And then every time you get an order on the platform, they automatically ship it out from the warehouse. So it's pretty much hands off for you. Mm -hmm. uh, when you are in Amazon FBA, you get the Amazon Prime badge, which is a huge selling point on Amazon. If your product is Prime, oh. it's much more likely to convert uh, mm -hmm. when consumers are shopping for it. So by being able to, to have that Prime badge using the FBA program is giving you a, a leg up on the rest of the competition. It also seems to be that Amazon tends to uh, feature products that are uh, that have the prime badge that are an FBA over other products when it comes to the search results page. So it is extremely important to use the, the fulfillment by Amazon network. There you go. Yeah, that's what I've heard. And you having that prime badge, I mean, when I'm ever buying something on Amazon, I'll be like, Oh, prime. Hey, I can get that quicker. Uh, you know, I don't have to worry about it maybe coming from someplace else. So that makes all the difference yeah. in the world. Uh, how do you optimize, or I guess you help people optimize for Amazon SEO. I guess I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah. So at the end of the day, Amazon's just a giant search engine. It's really not much different than Google. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just that the ranking factors are different. So when we look at oh. traditional SEO, you're looking at things like keywords, uh, you know, blogs, backlinks, all that type of stuff. Uh, when you're looking at Amazon, you're looking at metrics like conversion rate, sales velocity, or the number of units you're selling per day over, over a time period. Uh, 
And when you start optimizing for those factors is really when you start seeing the growth. So it starts by looking at your product, figuring out what the most relevant keywords are, and then rewriting the copy on your product listings to make sure that the most relevant keywords are showing up. You're also mm -hmm. going to want to optimize your images, highlighting some of those uh, most relevant keywords. So when a consumer is looking for whatever the product is, it says it in your first image or your second image. It there says, oh, this is exactly what I do, or this is exactly what it is. That's going to lead to a higher conversion rate. A higher conversion rate is going to lead to more visibility on the platform. It's going to lead to higher sales velocity. And it just creates a positive feedback loop. So from that point, you start moving further and further up the rankings on Amazon. There you go. Uh, it, that makes sense. I mean, it's a highly competitive environment. I mean, I, anytime I go on there, there's lots of things going, hey, you want to buy this? And, and it's it kind of knows what you're searching for. And and sometimes, it, sometimes the things it advises are better than the product you're looking at, too. Yeah. or seem better you know i don't know uh it's a it's a crapshoot uh what about reviews and stuff uh, those seem to be fairly important in people's buying decisions i know mine are uh when i look at stuff yeah i mean that's the truth for anything when you're buying online i mean if you don't mm -hmm. have good social proof like why is someone gonna have the trust of your brand so Amazon's recently made some changes to the way that they actually show reviews on the platform. Uh, but yeah. in general, having the social proof is a huge factor in actually getting people to purchase the product. Typically, if you're under you know four stars on Amazon, you're going to have a harder time converting people. And you really need to look at what the causes of those reviews are to try to address the problems. Sometimes it could be a problem with your product. Sometimes it could be with the manufacturing, the packaging. It could be with the way Amazon's storing it, it could be arriving damage. There could be a whole range of reasons that you really need to dive into these reviews. And that's also the, the really critical feedback that's going to help you improve as a company. So it has two benefits in that it helps you sell more, but it also gives you, I don't want to say real time, but it gives you feedback from consumers at a fairly uh, quick turnaround on how you can improve. And I think those are the two key aspects. The way Amazon's doing it now instead of before uh, was like before you would see products that have like 10,000 or 20,000 reviews or whatever. Mm -hmm. And now they're saying that, uh, for example, if I have a 4.7 average, mm. it's going to say 4.7 and it's going to say, you know, 70% of reviews ranked as 4.7. So you won't oh. see the whole number, num the whole, uh, the total number now you'll see like how many of the total numbers come out to this average. I haven't seen that because I was like, why did they change it? And, uh, you know, sometimes I have found that even though if it shows they have a lot of reviews, you've got to look at the stack of the reviews. Yeah. And sometimes you got to look at the ones and then you kind of find out some stuff there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and hopefully they're getting rid of, you know, they, it seems like they had a lot of bots or cheaters somehow that were making fake reviews. Um, cause I've seen a lot of them and I'm like, that product sucks. Uh, you guys have three different programs that you guys utilize. I uh, see on your website, new to a Amazon accelerator program and global expansion. Tell us how those work. Yeah. So each program is serving different purposes. Uh, the main program is the accelerator. And that's the one I mentioned a little earlier where we take brands from doing 1 million a year on Amazon to doing 10 million plus. Uh, with that program, we're, we're doing all the, the content, all the creation, all the SEO, all the strategy behind your marketing positioning and your merchandising on the platform and the actual advertising management and building out your sales funnel on Amazon. Uh, the new to Amazon is for brands that are looking, that are already doing sales online. They're usually doing about a million, maybe on other platforms, maybe through their own D2C website, but they have some type of brand recognition and they're looking to really get onto the Amazon platform the correct way. And we will essentially do all their setup, help them start scaling from, from zero. And then we, depending on the progress, we move them into the accelerator program to help them keep growing on the platform. Thanks. And finally, as I mentioned, like global expansion is another big aspect, especially this year. Uh, there's been a lot more interest in brands getting into the other markets. And we essentially will help them figure out all their logistics, all their compliance, uh, you know, all the fiscal aspects they need. And we have all the partners to help with all of this. Uh, to make sure that their transition into the new park marketplace goes smoothly, and then we'll help them manage the advertising and the marketing from there. There you go. I guess that I see that in the resources with your partners and different people that can help people do all the different aspects they need to do to do business on Amazon on top of what you guys do for them. Yeah. I mean, we have over 40 partners that help us uh, with all different aspects uh, of mm -hmm. what we're doing, but specifically on the global expansion piece, there's a lot of collaboration that needs to happen between different types of service providers. Uh, I mean, 
it's like anything. If you're starting a new business, it's essentially starting a new business. You need to make sure you have your tax IDs. You need to make sure you have the entity. You need to make sure that you have all the compliance you need for your products. It's a whole range of things. And that's really where we help a lot of brands navigate. Like, you know, I'm in, I'm from the U S how do I do this in the UK or how do I do this in France? And, and that's really where we get them to. There we go. That's awesome, man. Uh, what are some things we haven't talked about, about your company and how you guys do it and work with clients? Uh, any success stories you want to, you can talk about? Oh yeah. I mean, we have had tons of success stories. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the more recent ones that we can think of, uh, there was actually a brand that we took from uh, about zero to about, I think there were about 1.2 million. And then they were able to get on to Shark Tank from there. They actually turned down oh, wow. an investment. Yeah, yeah. They turned down an investment from Mark Cuban. Uh, Who hasn't, right? Yeah, exactly. And now they're on a $11 million a year run rate. So we took them from Damn. zero to $11 million. Um, there's other brands we've taken from, you know, 30000 a month to, to doing, you know, uh, $150,000, $160,000 a month in the course of a year. So um, these are the types of results that we can see, especially when – our, our clients really engage with us and really listen to our recommendations. Uh, for example, we recently made a change with the $11 million run rate company mm -hmm. uh, where we started implementing a new type of marketing. And overnight, they went from doing about $15,000 a day in sales to doing $45,000 a day in sales. Wow. That's so, pretty huge, man. Threefold increase. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's really what we enjoy doing. Like we, I, we love working with brands, finding what they want to achieve, understanding their goals, and then figuring out the best ways to help them reach those. That's that's really yeah. what we're all about as a company. And it's all about dialing in the search results and getting in front of that consumer when they're ready to buy, right? When, they, when they've when they got to spend their money. Yeah, I mean, that's a huge part of it. If you can't be found, if your products don't look good, people aren't going to pay attention to you. And then it's a matter of building out the advertising funnel in the correct way and then leveraging outside traffic sources like social media, like uh, email, whatever it may be, to, tr to have more and more people come to your product listings and actually buy the product. There you go. Uh, what sort of big, what, what is, how big of a threat are disruptor brands on Amazon to establish brands? Uh, I guess, do, what are disruptor brands and what are they a threat? Yeah, so I mentioned my art supply brand from back in the day. That was essentially a disruptor brand. I was coming in stealing market share from Crayola. Uh, that is not, it's not as easy anymore. It's still doable at the end of the day. When you, when you go to Amazon, most of the time you're not looking for a specific brand. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, you might be looking for a water bottle or you might be looking for a phone case or I don't know, a microphone mm -hmm. and whatever's showing up at the top of search results is more than likely what you're going to buy. I think, yeah. uh, I think the number is like the first three products is like 70% of all purchases uh, oh, in any wow. search results page. So uh, the opportunity for a brand that understands advertising and understands marketing the correct way and how to get their products positioned in those top spots mm -hmm. uh, allows them to steal more and more market share. So there's a lot of native Amazon brands that have been able to continually steal share from other brands. Uh, there's a really good example out there of a company called Liquid Death, uh, and they oh, do yeah. mineral water. And... Uh, they essentially came out of nowhere. They entirely rely on Amazon. The brand was completely built on the Amazon platform. Even on their D2C website, they push people to Amazon to purchase the product. Uh -huh. And all of this feeds back into that positive feedback loop that I talked about before, about getting more traffic, more conversions, more sales velocity, and then continuing to move higher and higher up the ranks. Mm -hmm. And that's allowing them to take market share from companies like... Uh, like Nestle Dannon, um, you know, Topo Chico, other, other mineral water brands. Wow. That is crazy, man. I was wondering how that company got built and just amazing. So final thoughts as we go out and, and final pitch uh, to people out there listening to uh, do business with you guys. Yeah. So look, the main thing we're looking for is brands that are interested in really succeeding on the Amazon platform and succeeding in e-commerce in general. If you're a brand that's doing a million dollars a year and you want to continue to grow your company, it's the perfect time to talk to us. I mean, we're coming into Q4 now. We still have a few, a, a little bit of time to help you get set up ahead of time. But if growth is on the roadmap for you in 2024, it's a great opportunity to reach out to us. Uh, if you're also interested in expanding to Latin America and reaching a whole new consumer base, we can also help a lot with that. So I'm excited to talk about to, to talk with anyone that's interested in either of those services. Uh, you can reach me at my email, mike at amzadvisors.com, or you can also reach us directly through the website, amzadvisors.com. There you go. Well, Mike, it's been very insightful and eye-opening, and we learned a lot about uh, what you guys do in Amazon. Thank you very much for coming on. 
thank you very much for having me, Chris. And, you know, I hope I was able to provide some great insights to your, your listeners. There you go. Uh, people will be inspired to start their own companies. And, and if not, call yours and have you guys do all the hard work <laughs> for them. There you go. Uh, thanks, guys, for tuning in. Go to goodreads.com, Fortress Chris Foss, YouTube.com, Fortress Chris Foss, LinkedIn.com, Fortress Chris Foss, and Chris Foss, one on the TikTok. Thanks for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe. We'll see you guys next time. And that should have a